hello and welcome to another one today we are going to model a bottle a flask inside of blender so let's go yeah. now hit i'm going to use blender 3.2 you can follow along with any version of blender you want now hit general and i'll be greeted with my default cube and then a light so i'm going to select both of them hit x for delete and by the way you can see all the shortcuts i press here in case you miss them next let's go to our, our scene properties we go to our units and then let's change the length from meters to centimeters and then let's go here to our viewport overlays and let's change the scale from 1 to 0 0.1 i'll hit enter then we have something like this next let's create our base shape by hitting shift a and then cylinder let me zoom in so that we can see what we have i'll hit here to bring up the cylinder properties i'll change the vertices to 24 i think it still works fine since we are going to add subdivision surface to make it more smoother i'll change the radius to 5 and then the depth that's what controls the height so we are going to leave it at 20 and then i'll hit tab I'll hit enter to, to commit my changes. Next, we are going to bevel this here and then here so that we have smoother edges at the bottom and then at the top. So I'll hit tab to go into edit mode and then I'll select my edge, select two here. I'll hold shift, I'll hold alt and then click on this edge to select the entire loop. Then we'll do control B to bevel. I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel up to add more cuts so i'll go with four something like this is fine then i'll do the same thing for for the top part i'll hit alt click select the entire loop Control b for bevel and then i'm going to reduce my bevel my loop to four something smaller like this right and then next let's add a subdivision surface to see what we have so i'll go to modifiers and then subdivision surface i'll right click and then shade smooth so that's what we have let's tap back into edit mode and then do ctrl r and then i'm going to scroll my mouse wheel up to add extra lip cuts to tighten up our entire form as a whole so next um, let's come let's work at the bottom here so I'll hit three to go into face select mode or hit here. And then I'll hold I'll select this face here. I'll do E for extrude and S. Now extrude it inside to somewhere here. I think it's fine. And then after that I'll hit X and then delete this face, this entire face. We are going to fill it in with a grid fill. So I'll hit two to change to edge select mode. Alt to click and then select the entire loop. I will face and then we we'll go to grid fill to fill it in with our grid. So I'm going to change my span to four and I'm going to play with the offset till I find it, the topology that I like. So I think I like this. It doesn't really matter what this is what I prefer. So next, let's go to the top part. Three for our face select mode. E, S to extrude it inside to somewhere here another e and then z to extrude it on the z axis like this i'll bring it to somewhere here i think it's fine and then i'll do x and i'm going to delete the faces so we have here so let's add some supporting loops at the top and then at the bottom to tighten up this corner here so i'll do ctrl r click now bring it down to somewhere here now i'll do ctrl r again click then bring it here so that we have something like this let me tab into edit mode so we can see what we have so this is what we have now as you can see so next let's add some thickness to our, our model to do that i'm going to hit a to select everything and then we we'll go to our extrude we'll go to extrude along normals so let's click and drag it inside so i'll drag it down i'll release so i'll have 
this op this option this panel here let's change the offset to negative negative point three so at least the, these numbers and we have this okay next let's add some supporting loops at the top of our shape so that we can hold the phone so we'll do ctrl r click let me bring it up to here ctrl r click and bring another one up inside like this so we have our shape is done and ready so next let's create a belt that goes from this side to, to the body of the shape and connected at the bottom so to do that, let's tap into edit mode once again. And then I'm going to select three faces from here. So any any it doesn't really matter. Any face you select is fine. So I'm going to change hit W and change to circle selects like this. Right. So you can go into your right to graphic view if you want. And then i'm going to do it like this so i'm going to select make sure you have your face select mode and then let's select all these faces like this and then let's select on the bottom two as well Right next, I'm going to change to my select box. Make sure the face select is still checked, and then I'll do Alt Shift click to select this loop as well. So I'll do Shift D to create a duplicate. Right click to to confirm my duplicate, and then I'll hit P, and then I'm going to separate by selection. So now, if you tab out of edit mode, and you can you can select this shape. And it's separate from the rest, right? So I'm going to hit slash on my mouse to isolate only this shape that we created, and then we hit tab to jump into edit mode, right? We hit A to select everything, and then let's extrude along normals. So we are going to extrude it on the outside. So I'm going to do points two for this one minus negative two like this so let's add some supporting loops to to keep our form so to do that we do control r and then we click and add a loop right at the middle okay so we do control b to bevel the loop so i'm going to scroll my mouse figure until i have just two two loop cuts and then i can bevel so this way I'm able to create an extra supporting loop for one going through the down to the bottom and one going through the up upper part like this. So we have our supporting loop. We can create we can do the same for the inner part. So I'm not going to bother myself with that. But I think it's fine. Next, let's select this entire bottom part. I just want to create an extra extrusion at the bottom. So to do that, we'll go to the face select mode. Then we go to select circle or yet still another way of selection is we just have to select this and then let's go to our edge select mode we do alt click alt shift click nope it's not working okay i wanted to select this entire part but it's not working for me so let me go to my face select mode and then let's do our circle select this is the easier way to do it so i'm going to select all this bottom part and then i'm going to hit i i for insert faces so we're going to insert it inside like this all right so next let's hit e to extrude it inside one e again to extrude it inside 
the second time so we have something like this so let me jump to out of edit mode to object mode so this is what we have nice so let me hit slash to bring all the extra objects so so far so good next let's create the cap of our shape of our bottle so to do that i'm going to select the main the main flask and then hit tab to go into edit mode once again i'll do alt click make sure you have your edge select mode active alt click on this edge right we're going to steal this edge and then use it to create our cup so i'll do shift d to duplicate right click to to confirm my duplicate right and then we hit p then separate by selection so now if you jump out of edit mode this this circle here is a different object on its own so let's go into edit mode once again and then let's hold alt click to select the entire circle loop and then let's go to our right orthographic view we can do that by clicking on this here and then let's bring it up so we do g z then we bring it up to somewhere here something like this okay so next let's do e s to extrude it inside like this then let's do e and then z sorry let me do it once again e s to extrude it inside to somewhere here then let's do e z to bring it up like this and then i'll close it up e s e s and then let's fill it inside with a good fill so quick one i'll change this one to something like four it doesn't really matter since we are not going to see the inside part i'll hold alt click and select this entire loop and then i'll do ctrl b to add a bevel make sure i have only three cuts like this and then alt click to select this entire loop here then i'll do e z to lock it on the z axis so that i'll screw it up somewhere here g z to bring it up a bit i think it's fine here it's fine i'll do e s then i'll do e s once again I'll bring it here right and then we do e z to bring it up like this we have something like this okay so we do next we do control alt click on this loop to add our tightening loop so i'll do control b to add bevel so somewhere here it's fine then control click now i'll add a loop cut control r i'll click now bring it down here then i'll add an extra loop cut inside like this and then i'll bring it here so i can tighten it up a bit so next we can add an extra two loop cuts in the middle here All right so i'll tap out of edit mode to object mode right click and then shade it smooth where we can see what we have so this is what we have so far i'll tap into edit mode once again and then i'll add an extra loop at the middle like this call control r then click right and then i'll do control b to bevel this loop here so i'll do three like this then i'll select the middle loop here by hitting alt and then click to select it and then let's do s to scale it inside like this okay let's tap in out of edit mode and that's what we have let's dive into edit mode once again let's kill it inside like this then we can add some loops to support this space or maybe we can push these loops here to, to do the support so i'll do alt click to select i'll hit gg twice so that i can slide this loop here alt click gg and then i can slide this loop here so let me tap out of edit mode and this is what we have so control r i'm going to add an extra loop here control r and then i'll add an extra loop here to make sure our entire form is cool 
so let's tighten up the space here so control r click i'll bring this inside control r click and then i'll bring this inside like this to so have a very really nice and tight head of our bottle next let's add the closing part of our cap so to do that i'll tap into edit mode once again i'll alt click on this entire loop to, to select it then we do shift we do shift d to duplicate p and then we separate it by selection tap out of edit mode and then select make sure that the duplicate we just made is selected and then let's jump into edit mode for that duplicate so i'll do Control alt click to select it so we can go to our right view right to the graphic view we can do that by clicking on this and then let's do g and the z axis and then let's bring it up to somewhere here okay next let's do e s to extrude it inside like this and let's do e z to extrude it up like this okay so let's do alt click to select the outer loop and then let's let's extrude it up to e z to extrude it up somewhere here i think it's fine then let's do e z to extrude it inside so e s to extrude it once again somewhere here okay then let's extrude it down let's extrude it down so we do e c extrude it one and then let's add an extra e z like this and then we do e s to extrude it like this and then let's fill it in with a grid fill so we do space grid fill to fill it in then let's go with four i think it's fine and you can play with the offset something like this that is it's looking nice so next let's alt click then let me select this loop here and then let's add a bevel so control p to add a bevel to make sure this part is tightened up then let's do the same for here alt click control p and then let's add a bevel I'll scroll my mouse view to add extra cuts like this. Okay. Next, let's select everything and let's hit slash to isolate it so that we have only this shape here. So this will be the closing part of our bottle. Let's add some thickness. So with everything selected, let's go to our extrude along normals. Then let's extrude it inside a bit. So the offset we can leave it at point minus point two is fine like this. Okay. So we have some thickness inside about two shape. So let me tighten up this place here. But to do that, let's right click and do a shade smooth so that we can see what we have. And let's jump into edit mode once again. R to add loop cuts somewhere here. And then R control R to add another loop cut here. Okay. Nice. So now let me hide our subdivision once for a bit. And then let's do Alt click to select this entire loop. And then let's go to select. We want to select this entire faces. So let's go to select. And then let's go to um select select loop and then we we'll go to select loop in our region so it's in this case it selects the entire faces here and let's do right so we have the entire face selected so let's do shift d to duplicate p to separate by selection and then tab out of edit mode and then let's select the newly selected face then let's jump into edit mode once again a to select everything and then we are going to extrude it so e on the z axis like this okay so we can 
hit slash once again. So we have this face here. It didn't extrude well at the first time we did. So E, then we extrude it on the Z axis like this. So the extrude is being moved on the Z axis like this. So let me go into my right photographic view and let me bring the extra things by hitting slash. So let's go into the right photographic view once again. Let's tick here so that we make sure this is is being aligned to the tip of our shape here so let's do g c to move it up like this okay so next let me close my x-ray mode and then let me isolate only this shape here and let's jump into edit mode control r and let's add a loop cut at the middle here let's do control b and then let's make sure we have extra two loops to tighten up the top and the bottom of our shape we have something like this tab to jump into edit mode once again and then we are done with our model yeah so our model is looking nice so what we have to do next is to parent everything to the base model so that when we move the base model everything moves along with it so to do that i'm going to drag and select everything and then i'm going to hold shift and click on the base model this one and then i'll do Control P, Control P, and then set parents to object. Keep transform. So now, if I do G and move my base model, everything moves along with it nicely. So next, let's add some plane. So do Control Shift A, Shift A, mesh, and then we add a plane. Let's do S and then let's kill it up like this. <laughs> okay. So let's tap into edit mode with our plane selected. Let me select this edge E, Z to extrude it in the Z axis like this. Let's do click on this and then let's do control B to bevel it. Scroll your mouse wheel to add extra more loop cuts like this. And then Let's tab out of edit mode, right click and then let's shade it smooth. Select X and then let's fill it even a bit small. Then let's click on our base model, G on the Z axis and then let's bring it up like this. Okay. So our base model is looking cool. Next, let's add our materials to it. So to do that, I'll hold here and drag. To create another space here another work window here and then i'm going to hold and drag to bring this up like this so this will be our camera preview this will be for our shader so i'll change the workspace to shader editor so this will be our shader editor and then this will be our main um, layout here so we can manipulate our object if you want to so next let me hit on this icon to, to toggle to camera view so this is what we have i'm going to scroll in so that we have something like this and then i'll hit n to bring up this panel i'll go to our view and then we will lock camera to view so now we'll be able to scroll and position our objects inside our camera without moving the camera so we have something like this okay so next let's go into our render properties and let's change our render engine to cycles and then let's change the advice to gpu compute okay and let's change our viewport view from here to um, render viewport shading so let me click on it and then we see our objects being rendered so right now there's no light or anything so let's quickly add an hdri then a few lights and then we can set up our materials so to add the hdri we go to our shader editor then we change from object to world right let me drag so we have background like this i'll select my background and then i'll do ctrl t to to set up my environmental texture make sure you have no drangler add-on enabled to be able to do this 
so if you don't you go to edit preference and then you quickly go to add-ons and then search for node wrangler and then you check this box to enable it so now we have our environmental texture opened like this so everything is looking pink before because we don't have any hdri set into it so to set the hdri all we have to do is go to open and then locate our hdri okay so you can get some from hdri haven i'm going to leave the link in the description below they have a lot of cool and nice hdri for free so you can quickly grab yourself a copy and then just follow the, the same process i did to add it to your scene so now our hdri is added i'm going to change the strength to 0.2 so that we have a little uh, the hdri is, is acting as a fill light to fill out the entire uh, to fill out our scene but then we are going to add an extra area light to really bring out our our scene in our model so to add an area light i'll bring my case out somewhere here i'll do shift a and then light we go with area light so it's been added here so let's do g z and let's bring it up so this our area light here let's do s and then let's kill it to create even more softer lights right so let me bring it up g z and let's bring it up even more so let's turn our gizmo and giz object gizmo so let's turn the move and then rotate for now so it will help us to easily move our our objects in the scene like this and this so let me do s to scale it even more right so let me go to my light properties and then i can decrease the power to something like eight okay nice next let me bring it even up a bit next let's do shift d to duplicate our light let's bring it to somewhere here and then let's hold this yellow thing here and then point it to our object our scene like this can bring it here rotate it this is purely an artistic something so play around with it and find find the lighting that works best for you next we can do shift d once again duplicate it and bring it here let's scale this light on the x axis like this then let's point this yellow thing to our object once again and let's bring it down and let's bring it back let's point it to our object like this so let's scale it on the z axis let's make sure it's facing our object like this maybe we can decrease the strength of this to let's say two yes the strength of this to five so we have this so let's hit on this icons here to turn off everything so that we can see our rendered objects like this let me zoom in and then let me hit t to hide the tools here so next let's add our materials so we have the first material will be this one so let's select and then let's go to world and change it to objects and then we hit new to add a new material let's change the base color to the color we want something like this and then let's increase the roughness to 0.3 let's decrease it to 0.3 make it more shiny and next we are going to add a noise tester so we do shift a and then let's set for noise the noise tester then we do we can also one cool thing is you can hold this just leave and then let's look for bump and then we can just choose height then it's going to automatically connect the factor to the height of our bump node and then we can just hold this normal and then add it to this normal okay so we have this i just want to create the, the that textured feeling you have with some plastic so we have this for now so let's select this one and then hit ctrl t so that we had we add our texture coordinates and let's change it from generated to object and we have this now so next let's increase the scale to something like 900 and let's set our, our details to zero so we have this going on 
let's decrease the strength to 0 0.02 don't know if you can see it it's, it's there but it's very subtle then let's decrease the distance to 0 0.5 so maybe let's increase the strength a bit to let's say 0 0.05 yeah so i think i like what we like what we have here let's change the color to a bit right you can obviously play around find something that works best for you so i think what we have is cool so we are going to apply it to this strap here and then this part of the cap as well so to do that we are going to select hold shift select all these three and then hold shift and click on the last object and then we do control l and then let's do link then we do link materials so now this shape is sharing the same material with this one and then this top part as well okay so next let's select this top here we are going to make it we are going to make it um, a trans transparent glass so to do that we will do we make sure it's selected and then we hit new to add a new material make sure the base color is purely white so you can check that by going to rgba and make sure everything is 111 or you can make sure the x is set to f f f f f so that everything is white then let's go to our transmission here and let's set our transmission to one and let's set our let's decrease our roughness so if i bring it in you can see so we are having a very weird the reason a very weird shading the reason being is i think the normals are not properly are not are not it's not it's not properly and um, they are not facing the right normals so to check that we quickly come here viewport overlays and then let's set face orientation right so as i told you the red means the, the normals are facing the the other direction so make sure you have you have this object selected tab into edit mode a to select all and then do alt n and then we do flip to flip the normals tab out of edit mode do the same thing for this so i'll tab into edit mode alt n and then we make sure we have everything selected alt n and then we flip the normals then we do the same thing for this and then this as well so tab out of edit mode select this shape Tab into edit mode once again here to select everything alt n then we flip the normals do the same thing for this one so tab edit mode here to select everything alt n then we do flip normals to flip the normals so now you can see our glass shader is behaving as it's supposed to okay nice so let me hide our face orientation it's done so next what we have to do is give this part of our our bottle a different different shader so to do that i'll tab out of edit mode now make sure this is selected here then we come to our materials and then we create another copy of the main material it's been linked to so if i click on this i now have a different copy but you have the same properties as the main material so now we can change the base color to something like that and it's going it's not going to affect the rest of the materials okay so we have this so next we are going to add label right here somewhere here so to do that let's import in our texture so i'll go here and i'm going this is the label i'm going to add heat up as you can see so it's a png image you can quickly create any image you want and then use it so i'm going to drag and drop it inside our our shader editor here so we are going to use this as a as a mask to mask um to mask that place so that we can give it any color we want let me just do it and it will make sense to you when you see it so i'll select this principal shader here i'll do shift d to add a duplicate I'm going to change it to any color for now so that we can can just experiment and see so to mix these two shaders here and this one and this one i have to do shift a 
and then i'll search for mix so mix rgb so we have three out inputs so we have the factor then shader one and then shader two right okay so i'm going to drag and drop it here so i guess connected to so this will be the main shader and then this will be the the second one so i'll put it in the second one and then i'll put the alpha as the factor here okay so as you can see now we have this right here so let's do control t to bring in texture coordinates make sure it's set to uv so this right here is affecting um, where this principal shader shows or where this one shows right so we can now change to any color and it's, it's going to change here and um to see what we really want let's quickly fix our uv so let's go to uv editing let's make sure we select all these faces it's a bit hard to see now so i'm going to unplug it for a bit for a second i'll go to um, model let's go to layout okay no and then let's change it from piece to clip so that we have only one like that okay so let's jump into uv editing once again so what we are going to do is we are going to select all these faces this entire loop around here and then we are going to unwrap so the easiest way to do that is we first select all these faces here like this right and then we change from face select mode to edge select mode and then we hold control and, and then click the inner part to select all the inner edges so that we are left with the outer edge is selected so you do U, and then we go to max scene to mark this place as scene and then we hit three to go into face select mode once again right and then we do l to select all of this length and then you you go U once again and then we go to smart uv project right so it will be something like this when you do so we do l Make sure it's inside these faces so to select all these faces then we do s to scale it up okay. so as you can see this is the representation of the faces here so if i select this face you can see here and then here so let me do l let me hit l to select all these faces once again and let me hit l here to select so i'll do s to scale it up even more i'll do r and then rotate it on the z axis 90 we do g and then we move it on the z axis to somewhere here so this is what i'm i'm looking for next i'm going to select this face here hit l to select the entire all the other extra loops here and then i'm going to do a to select everything and then g to either move it outside so that it doesn't show as you can see so it's fine so we have moved it outside of our our mask so now let's go back to our layout and then now we can give it any color we want so i'm going to go for a darker version of blue something like this we can make it more of right it catches reflection and all that cool stuff so this is a very cool way of setting up a label for your for your products if you want to do uv or wrapping so now everything is done i'll hit slash to bring up everything back and we are done we are almost done for render so next i'm just going to create a duplicate so this is the the main parent and all the objects are inside i'll hit shift click to make sure everything is selected and then i'll do shift d to duplicate to create a duplicate like this okay so it still holds the parenting and everything so i can select the main parent and then hold my rotate tool to rotate it however i want and prefer okay so at this stage you can obviously play around with the camera the lights the positioning and everything to make sure you find something that works very nice for you as i'm doing so feel free to play around with everything and change the position of the lighting 
to see what other cool effects you come up with so i think i like what i see now so next let's just select this one let's bring it back a little and let's select our camera and let's add a depth of field so i'll tick this box here to add a depth of field i'll select this eyedropper tool and then i'm going to click on this object to make it the main object of focus so i think everything is is now fine for me so we go to our, our scene make sure everything is set properly so we have gpu compute the noise is thick and then let's go to our camera our color management so we can change the look from filmic to standard we have even cooler render and then we can change the this look here to high contrast which is too much so let's do none and then we can render so to render our final scene all we have to do is go to render and then we go to render image and then we render our final image so our final image is rendered to save it you just have to go to image save us and then um, find your file location and then type in the name and then do save images and change to png jpeg whatever you want and then save it thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful please consider subscribing sharing or liking as it helps the channel to grow see you on the next one